on safer strength, as well as a little bit on body language, verbal and physical jiu-jitsu and escalation, de-escalation, and the benefits of positive reinforcement, because people don't respond very well to negative reinforcement, neither animals, children, or drunk people. Um, but what they do respond to is positive reinforcement, which starts, can you shuffle back please, good sir, or lamp you for him, okay. professional attitude, professional attitude. Okay, so talking of professional attitude, it starts from the door with positive reinforcement. If you greet every person that comes into the venue or you come in contact and deal with, eye contact, smile. And you say good evening folks or have a good night welcome these things it already puts people on positive reinforcement because you're encouraging them to behave better by treating them like they're going to behave better all these things if people want to fist bump you people want to shake your hand people want to hug you it's times where you're not going to be in the mood for any of these things it's going to be times where you're not going to be in the mood to greet people but it saves a lot of time and energy if you do it beforehand People want to shake their hand, people are doing this, if you've got a good mood going, you're like, hey, it's all good, give me a handshake, when you're doing that, make it a little bit longer and silly, and people want to test you out as well, they always want to feel you up, see how strong you are as the bouncer. <sighs> I'm not a big lad, but I have trained my entire life, so I encourage that, and I hug them back, because the thing, but I stay sideways on, keep it appropriate as well. Same with kids, we do not stand square on in a fighting situation because we're an open target for a lot of different things. The other thing's really not well balanced in this position, particularly if the person tries to rush us and get in the venue. We'll talk about bottlenecking in just a sec. But for hugging people, square on and this sort of thing, particularly if you approach somebody to talk to them, is either aggressive or intimate. So we don't do that. So what we do is we stay sideways on. Which is also procedure or should be when, you know, talking to or giving physical reassurance to say someone who is a minor or a protected person, uh, learning difficulties, etc, etc. But if the, if the person coming in wants to do that and you can get yourself in the mood, then by all means, hug it up. It's all good. Sideways on, they're all patting you and seeing where it's going and they're giving you big, big, big hugs. I'm still sideways and I'll give them a hug back. I'm all clinched up here and it's all friendly and good and that does encourage people to behave well as you send them in. It's positive reinforcement. Okay, if you're friendly with people and you act like that, they do find it hard to fight with you later on. Particularly if you approach them later on and say, man, like, you know, like, what are you doing, man? Like, you know, you're behaving here. Like, you're gonna leave, you can't do that. You know, you give them an explanation and leave and all the rest of that, and you're there ready to shake their hand again and hug them on the way out. They're not in any trouble, hopefully. That encourages people to leave without aggression. Now, let's say we do have someone that is aggressive. Obviously, if the person approaching the place in the first place is aggressive and is not responsive to hello, welcome, blah, 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 and seems to have an aggressive attitude about them, that might be someone you don't want to select for entrance. Obviously, you can't just not let people in for having resting bitch face, but people should respond to hello, how are you, etc., etc. Aggressive again, same procedures. When you make the approach, sideways off, not square on, because aggressive and intimate, you want to avoid that. And we approach friendly, eye contact, smile, all the rest of that stuff. Now, if they immediately start being aggressive with us, you might want to consider your tone, etc. However, being friendly, you know, professional courtesy, all the rest of that stuff, but being friendly to people, having a sort of, uh, can we just sort of behave here attitude without telling people what to do, but positive re reinforcing the correct attitude and the, the correct behavior works a lot better. Sideways on, it's always good. Particularly if the place is busy or the person is approaching or is aggressive and you think it's going to kick off, sideways on is your best defense. Observing. I have to go approach this here and I'm already leaning in lower so I can listen to him because it's loud. And I'm bringing my hands up to protect myself. I'm also very much aware of my groin. Okay, this is prime reason 101 where I stand sideways on to people. Now, if it's in a busy nightclub, um, depending on the situation, etc., I will almost even turn myself back into the person because it makes hitting me or doing stuff to me very hard. Now I need to check what he's doing with his hands as I do all this and this is the other reason why I have my head down so I can use my peripheral vision. Okay if you've got someone that is being overtly aggressive or threatening to knock you out and all the rest of that stuff, um, 
you know, if it's already outside the gate, etc., if we can have a lot more distance between ourselves and the person, perfect. And again, we stay sideways on. It's just easier that way. It means, let's say, they somehow manage to very quickly pull a weapon I haven't seen out of their pocket. It means I can leg it to the door or to the bottleneck or wherever, if that's necessary, because I'm not armed. I'm not going to take on a guy with a knife. Um, not unless I have, and I don't know I do, I have a trusty torch which helps. There's other tools you can use as well, but the torch is probably one of the most useful and safe ones. <clears throat> Anywho, so staying sideways on is all part of it and dealing with them. When we do actually have to physically restrain someone, it's better to do it before they start fighting, if we're anticipating they're gonna resist, okay? If they are absolutely swinging for it inside and we have to restrain them, again, a sideways approach, even someone that's like, swinging and going for it is your best bet. Now it depends if they're punching and kicking. Because if they're kicking, I like the ability to sort of block those kicks and punches by again staying sideways on and stepping in with my leg kind of like this, so that my legs are close and I can't get kicked anymore. And when it comes to dealing with the hands, some people will wrestle with you up here and all the rest of that, which is fine, you know, the problem is you get into stuff like this, which is not good for you, and that's actually the number one reason why I recommend wearing gloves on the door, not for punching people and knocking them out and all the rest of that stuff, because you lose your license. Stop! 